So in our last video, we looked at how to use the empirical rule to calculate percentiles, calculate um, what percentage of values fell between different z-scores. But those were when I had nice z-scores of negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So what happens, because obviously sometimes people do not fall at these beautiful integer numbers, and so we have to be able to find values based on those. So we have these things called Z tables that we can use and those will be in your notebook on page eight and nine when you get those pages. And basically what we do is on the side, it gives us um, the first digit after the decimals place and then we would look over to the right and find which column we need. So let's look at some problems. Here's what it's gonna look like. You have the negative side of the Z table and the positive side on the right. Notice that what they have is all shaded to the left, which is going to be important because sometimes I want what's to the right, and so we're going to need to subtract. All right, so let's look at our first problem. We have z less than negative 0.75. So what I do is I go on my negative side, I go down to negative 0.7, and then I need to come over here to the column with 0 0.05. And so I would get this value, aka 0.2266. And we'll do four decimal places on these. What if I wanted z greater than 1.5? So if I approximate that on my curve, then that would be about there. And I want greater than. However, my table is going to give me this shaded part. So let's find out what that shaded part is. If we have 1.5, I go down in my table until I get to 1.5, and that will be 0.9332. And the whole underneath of the curve would be 1. So I'm going to do 1 minus 0.9332, and that gives me 0.0. 668 or about 7%. Okay, sometimes they want us to find between two different values. So this is approximately where those two z scores would be falling, a little less than two standard deviations below and about half a standard deviation above my mean. So we're going to find the first one. So negative 2.1 Three. That's going to be here. And then 0.54, which would be this one. And what we want to think about real quick is that we have the overlapping part. So I have this little piece, and then I have all of that shading. And so to get just the middle part here, then I need to subtract. So 0 0.7054 minus 0 0.0166, and that gives me 0 0.6888. So once again, because I want the middle part, we're going to subtract the right value minus the left value. This one is different though, because I'm gonna be asking for kind of the tail ends of these. So let's find our values in the table. So Z less than negative 1.4, is 0 0.08076 and 2.05 would be that. So I need the tail ends this time, that end, which we said is 0 0.0808, and then I need this end. However, what my table gave me was everything to the left of that, not the piece I want. So I'm going to need to do 1 minus the 0.9798, and that gives me that this little guy right here is just 0 0.0202, and now I'm going to add those two values together, and that gives me 0 0.1010. So once again, that's coming from adding the two values. So we have to keep track. When am I adding? When am I subtracting? That sort of thing. So let's look at some examples. So these are, you know Shelly, these are Shelly's little ferrets. And so we have some fun problems. 
Um, next year I'll make some about Einstein, but this year we'll use Shelly's because these were cute problems. So, Miss Temple, aka Shelly, has two adorable female ferrets named Shiloh and Bellatrix. Bellatrix? Adult female ferrets called Jills have a mean length and a standard deviation of 0.9 inches. Assume that ferret lengths can be modeled by our normal model. So when we do these problems, like on an FRQ or on a quick check or on a test, we have four things we want. We want to sketch the situation. We need to calculate our z-score, find the probability using a table, and then give a statement of the final answer in context. So for my situation, I am looking for um, if Jill is the probability that Jill is less than 15 inches in length. So I have on my table where 15 would be, and the mean is 14. So that means I'm going to put it a little bit over that one standard deviation. So my z score would be z equals my value minus my mean over my standard deviation. So value, mean, standard deviation, just review of what a z-score is. So now that gives me 1.11, which I look up in the table just like I did in those prior practice problems. So when I look that up, I get 0.8665. And how we write this now is p. This means probability. So the probability that your z-score is less than 1.11 is 0.8665. So this is the structure of what we want the answer to look like. But that's just a bunch of math gibberish. So we need to put this in context. So in context, this would look like the probability that a randomly selected Jill is less than 15 inches in length is 0.8665. So we have probability randomly selected. What did we care about? Less than 15 inches. Give the probability. So let's look at another one. What is the probability that a randomly selected Jill is longer than 14, uh, sorry, 13.3 inches in length? So here's my 14. So 13.3 is going to be below my mean, so about there. So we're going to do our z-score, which is value 13.3 minus mean over standard deviation. And that gives us negative 0.78. Now we look up the negative 0.78 in the table. And when I do that, I get 0.2177. But remember, the Z table is only giving me stuff to the left, which would be less than 13.3 inches. And I care about to the right. So I need to do 1 minus 0.2177, which gives me 0.7823. So my interpretation would be the probability that a randomly selected Jill is longer than 13.3 inches in length is 0.7823. So what's the probability that a randomly selected Jill is between 12.5 and 14.5 inches in length? So don't forget we have our mean. So we're talking about 12.5 and 14.5. So there's approximately where those would be. And we want to know in between. So if you remember from the front of the page, this is where we're going to find each of them, each of these scores, and then subtract their areas. So my first z-score, value minus mean over standard deviation. And my other one, value minus mean over standard deviation. And I get negative 1.67 and positive 0.56 when I look those up in my z tables. And so if I want the probability of it being between those two value, values, I take the rightmost one, 0.56, uh, which gives me an area of 0.7123. And I'm going to subtract from it the leftmost which corresponded with 0 0.0475, and that gives me a probability of about 66%. But what do we need to do at the end? 
put our answer in context. So in context, it would be the probability that a randomly selected Jill is between 12.5 and 14.5 inches in length is 0.6648. All right, so sometimes we have to go the other way and I am given the percentile or amount of information somewhere and I have to go backwards. So if I want the 30th percentile, for me, that means we're talking about where I have 30% of data below that point, aka I'm looking for something that's as close to 0.3 as possible. So if I look at my table and I'm just looking at these values, getting as close to 0.3 as I can, this is looking like it's going to be somewhere in between here. So anything between negative 0.52 and negative 0.53 would be correct. So you're just getting as close as possible. If I want the top 25%, then remember that means Hello, my Z table only does stuff to the left. So if I want the top, I actually need to be paying attention to this bottom part. Okay, so I need to look in the table, not for 0 0.05, but for 0.95, because I'm looking for what's below. So I go in my table and I'm looking, looking, looking. How close do I get for 0.95, which is going to be somewhere in there, either 1.6 or 1.65. So once again, you always have to keep in mind the Z table is giving you the area to the left. So let's look at this last one. What if I want the middle 50%? What's the other name for that? IQR. So if I want middle 50%, then that means I need to find where I have my bottom 25% and my top 25%. So let's start with our um, bottom 25%. So with our bottom 25%, I'm just going to be looking for 0.25 in my table, which is the top table I have up there. And that's going to be somewhere in between these two. So negative 0.67 or negative 0.68. So we'll go with negative 0.67 since that's a little bit closer. And now when I look at this, once again, we're not looking at 0.25. That's the top 25%. Instead, in the table, I need to look up 75% or 0.75. So let's look on my positive Z values. And I know to go on the positive side because this is to the right of my mean. So 0.75 is going to be between these two values right here. So let's go with positive. 0.67 and that gives me my z scores between which I have the middle 50%. So let's put these in context. The heights of adult males are normally distributed with a mean of 70.2 inches and a standard deviation of 42 inches. Find the 70th percentile. So we want to sketch our situation. So I have a mean of 70.2 and then a standard deviation of 4.2 inches. So because it's just giving me a percentile, I just know to estimate it's gonna be above the mean. So in my table, I'm looking for the closest thing to 0.70. And when I do that, I get a Z value of 0.52. So if I wanna find the actual value, we're gonna use the fact that my Z score equals my value minus my mean divided by my standard de deviation. So my Z score, equals value minus mean over my standard deviation. And now I solve that just like back in Algebra 1. Multiply by 4.2 um, 4 and add 70. And that means that the 70th percentile would be 72.38 inches. Make sure you put your units on these. So my final answer in context, put it in a sentence. The 70th percentile of adult male heights is 72.38 inches.
In tests conducted on jet pilots, it has been found that their blackout thresholds are normally distributed with a mean of 4.7 and a standard deviation of, can't read it because that's right where my little icon is. So we want to find the top 10% of jet pilots. So if I want the top 10%, then what do I need to look up in my Z table? I need to look up the bottom 90%, aka where it's putting 0.9. So when I do that, I get 1.28. Set up your equation, z score equals value minus mean over standard deviation. Solve like you normally would, and I get 5.724 g's. 5.724 g's. Final answer in context would be. The blackout threshold for the top 10% of jet pilots is 5.724 Gs. And still on that same type of problem, find the IQR of blackout thresholds. So IQR means we want the middle 50%. So we actually already looked up what these z-scores would be, right? Because it doesn't matter. That's the whole point of a z-score is that they're standardized across whatever problems we're talking about. But Remember what we did is we had the bottom 25%, so we looked up the 0.25, and then we also needed to subtract our bottom 75%, the 0.75. So we had negative 0.67 and positive 0.67. So now we do the equation twice, once with the negative 0.67 and get 4.164 g's, and once with the positive 0.67, and we get 5.236 g's. So once again, because I have to do two boundaries, I'm going to have two answers to give me where my um, IQR is coming from. So the IQR of the blackout thresholds for the jet pilots is 1.072, because what did I have to do? IQR is Q3 minus Q1. So that's where our 1.072 Gs came from.